Hello everyone, my name is Tiange Zhang. I am a PhD student in Advanced Robotics and Control Lab at Vanderbilt University. My advisor is Dr. David Brown. Today I will be presenting our work on human-driven compliant transmission mechanism. For centuries, humans have been trying to improve their mobility, such as moving faster, using cleverly designed devices that do not require external energy from batteries or motors. For example, using wheels, roller blades allow athletes to move three times as fast as Usain Bolt by increasing ground contact time. Adding pedal crank and gear shifting mechanisms, bicycles enable riders to generate more energy and move six times as fast as the best sprinter. The aforementioned device is using wheels to increase speed without external energy. But is it possible to improve event-driven tasks, such as jumping and running without wheels? Our prior theoretical work investigated augmenting human jumping and running with energetically passive exoskeletons, or exoskeletons only require energy from humans. Those exoskeletons use variable stiffness springs to allow energy generation while legs are in the air and provide explosive power to propel human body as needed during energy release. This type of exoskeletons can theoretically allow humans to jump higher than 5 meters and run as fast as 18 meters per second. Those theoretical studies confirm the possibility of improving jumping and running with passive devices. But what can we improve performance without a device? Human legs have limitations during event-driven tasks. The first limitation is positive mechanical work can only be done during ground contact time, which is a split second during running, while bicycle allow continuous ground contact time. The second limitation is human muscle tendon structure has limited energy storage capacity, where sprains can provide much more. The third limitation is human muscle has inverse force velocity relation, just like electric motors. Higher forces can be generated with lower speeds or vice versa. To accommodate those limitations, those theoretical exoskeletons require a sophisticated mechanism that allows more energy generation, which requires features like pedal crank mechanism on a bicycle, more energy storage capacity, which requires external elastic element, and adjustable energy release requires features that allows modification on force and stiffness release, like what a variable stiffness spring can provide. So we're wondering if we could combine the benefits of bicycles and variable stiffness springs in a human-driven mechanism that could enhance human performance in event-driven tasks, such as jumping, running, and loaded walking. In this work, we propose a human-driven compliant transmission mechanism. First, let's take a look at the conceptual design. The conceptual design of this type of mechanisms requires three key elements to tackle the aforementioned limitations. Continuous energy generation, sufficient energy storage, and adjustable energy release. Inspired by bicycles, we use pedal crank cam mechanism to enable more energy generation which is stored by an air spring here. The stored energy is released with a variable moment arm mechanism, essentially a level arm in a rotational form. These three elements constitute the human-driven compliant transmission mechanism in an artificial-like form on the right. How does this mechanism work? To supply energy, the user needs to turn the pedal like what they do on the bicycle. The difference here is pedal is on the outside of the leg instead of between two legs. While they are pedaling the whole rotation, the cam progressively compresses the air spring, which stores the energy. When the rider decides to release the energy, they need to turn the pedal a little over to disengage the cam and engage the moment arm mechanism shown on the right. First, let's take a look at the pedal crank cam mechanism with the spring to allow energy generation and storage. One of the limitations of human leg we are trying to tackle is configuration-dependent force profile. On the bicycle, the effective force can be generated by the human on the pedal perpendicular to the crank as shown as a blue curve here. Human can generate less force during upstroke and more force during downstroke. Around dead zones, 
little force can be applied. However, while the spring is continuously compressed, more and more force is required shown as a yellow curve here. How do we compensate the difference between the forces? This problem does not appear with the bicycles because energy generation and release occur at the same time, and no energy storage element is accumulating force or energy there. To resolve this issue, we choose to use a cam with a customized profile to provide varying mechanical advantage. By modifying the cam profile, obtained by a moment balance between cam and the pedal, we can accommodate different force curves as needed. For example, if we want to have no energy generation, we could use a cam has a circular profile, where the radius does not change. Therefore, no deformation occurs in air spray. If energy generation is desired, a cam with its radius changes progressively, like the one shown on the slide can be found using this relation. The second limitation we are trying to tackle is the inverse force-velocity relation of human muscle. For example, while we are riding bicycle uphill, the demanding force can be produced with a lower pedaling rotational speed, and if we pedal fast on a flat road, the force and acceleration can be generated as low. Bicycles use gear shifting mechanism to accommodate this relation. We want to have the similar effects by changing the initial air pressure in the cylinder before each rotation. For example, with higher pressure, the force required at the pedal is larger, shown as darker lines on the graph. And if we release the initial pressure, the force required to pedal is less, shown as lighter lines. Once the energy is stored after a full rotation, we use variable moment arm mechanism to provide adjustable energy release. Here, the limitation we're trying to tackle is again the inverse force-velocity relation of human muscle. By changing the self-locking brake position on the lever arm, we can adjust the force and the stiffness profile at release. The brake position can be adjusted before energy release as the variable moment arm mechanism is disengaged. Once it is engaged during energy release, the spring force will be released on the level arms and the self-locking brake will be engaged to fix the relative position of the brake and arm. The closer this brake is from the center hub, the higher force and stiffness can be produced. With this feature, the force and the stiffness produced by this mechanism can be much higher than the human biological-like capacities. What can we do with this mechanism? For future work, we want to implement this mechanism in exoskeletons that augment human locomotion, similar to the figure on the left where the user will be riding on the exoskeleton. Here, we use running as an example to exemplify the working principle of this mechanism. At toe-off, the user starts to swing the right leg. During swing phase, the user rotates the pedal and the spring is continuously being compressed by the cam with a changing radius. At touchdown, the user further compresses the spring until mid stance, where the energy will be released at the desired rate through the variable moment arm mechanism to propel the user. If the rider experiences fatigue or less energy is needed for the next step, they can switch on and off of this air valve to change the initial air pressure similar to the simple finger motion to shift the gears on a bicycle and then repeat the whole process for the next step. In conclusion, in this work, we propose a novel human-driven compliant transmission mechanism which allows energy generation while the leg is in the air, similar to bicycles. This mechanism also offers sufficient energy storage capacity, which is crucial for event-driven tasks, such as jumping, running, and loaded walking. This mechanism also provides force, stiffness, and power amplification to exceed the biological limitation of human legs. The ongoing work for this mechanism is evaluating the current prototype shown on the right with the mechanical testing. More design iteration is required to further address issues with user interface and stability. We are also working on implementing this mechanism in a complete exoskeletal form to assist human jumping, running, and loaded walking in the near future. Thank you.